A reading from Acts. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power and by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of the good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is that this man standing before you is in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. A Gospel reading from the 10th chapter of John. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my. I I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also. And when they listen to my voice, so they will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up. I have received this command from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you, my friends in Christ. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the shepherd who lays his life down for the sheep, You know, the shepherd model is one that often gets attributed as a a good characteristic for clergy. It's, It's the role of clergy to lead a flock, and sometimes there are challenges that come with it. Kind of like for this pastor. Today's reading comes from the book of Proverbs. If I may digress for a moment from my prepared message, I mean it when I say to you, You guys! Sometimes you're bad! Don't be jerks! You're supposed to be good! I'm in my office every day, and somebody comes in, and they're like, Hey, whoops! My like, don't! Dan, what is your deal? If anybody doesn't know, Dan is the worst. I took a vow to not say who was the worst, but it's Dan. You guys are making me look bad in front of God! What's that? Oh, look, it's Jesus. And he said, stop it! The word of the Lord. (laughs) Stop it! (laughs) 
Ah. <laughs> uh, now, what's wrong with that approach? Clearly, if that was how a shepherd led the flock, that would just be a betrayal of trust. Uh, his, his way of trying to get his flock's attention is not one that you would want. Of course, you know, it's really entertaining to think of that level of brutal honesty. Uh, however, we think about when Jesus is talking about the good shepherd, uh, that's, that's not what he's trying to, to convey. So a few observations about perhaps, you know, what, what Jesus is talking about as the good shepherd means, like, what do we think about when we think about sheep? Uh, according to the Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, a group of sheep is called a flock, but sheep do not always remain in that flock simply for protection from predators because sheep actually form strong bonds with one another and such uh, as the bond with a mother and her lamb and other friendships. Studies have shown that sheep can distinguish between emotional expressions, such as pictures of sheep with calm, startled, or fearful expressions. So it's important for uh, sheep to have a skill of knowing how other sheep feel. And that's how they form strong social relationships to keep, to keep the, the flock safe. Thinking about that, I mean, that metaphor really does kind of get carried through as we think about a congregation. Uh, so when I went out to the farm with, uh, with a few of my kids, I definitely noticed that to be very, very true. All of the sheep came together when the food was being served. They were like, this is great. We get food. And then all of a sudden we opened the gate and let my kids in there. And so as the children's message helped kind of demonstrate, uh, you know, the sheep are, they're, they're worried about wolves and wolverines and bad guys. And so they were a little suspicious of whether my kids were the good guys or the bad guys. And so as they entered into the gate, they drew the attention of the sheep and it wasn't, uh, an immediate thing where they were able to recognize what was going on. But then soon as my kids started to chase the sheep, a majority of the sheep were like, we're out of here. <laughs> and they all flocked elsewhere. They tried to find a place that they could be just kind of protected and sheltered away from uh, getting chased. I think sheep are a great metaphor for us because Jesus knew this, uh, that this comparison was going to hit his audience in a really strange way. You know, he, he chooses a shepherd as his model of a metaphor instead of like a powerful king or a general, because this metaphor is, you know, it's, it's about people that are following someone and it's not this great army. It's they're being compared to, to sheep. So Jesus isn't just telling this random story about, about sheep and thinking, Hey, this, this is, um, you know, just be like this. There's a bigger thread to what's going on. So John 10 is what we heard today. It's part of, a, a, you know, there's a couple passages where, where Jesus is talking about sheep uh, but it's actually a continuation of what happens in John 9. So in this previous chapter, there's a man who's been born blind. And Jesus tells him to go wash and his sight will be restored. And so what ensues after this man's sight is restored is this huge debate. And so the Pharisees put together this gigantic investigation. They're trying to figure out how on earth this man who was born blind can now see. And the truth is really right there. All the Pharisees have to do is look it's an ironic twist to the story that the man born blind can see, yet those who have sight are blind to the miracle in front of them. So Jesus then launches into this story. He starts talking about being this metaphor of being a shepherd. And the sheep don't respond by sight, but by voice. They hear the shepherd and they respond. And so in the gospel reading that, that Dan just shared with us, he says, I have other sheep that do not belong to the fold. And I must bring them also because they will listen to my voice. Think about the audience who's hearing this. If they're part of the chosen flock, the special ones like the Pharisees, you don't want to hear about the flock expanding and allowing others and outsiders to be in. You also don't want to be compared to the hired hand being told, well, you're just going to flee and abandon your flock to save your own skin. But that's exactly what Jesus says. And they hear this and they know that he's trying to throw them uh, this, this huge curveball and make them look bad. And this is exactly who Jesus is suggesting that they are. He's telling them that they don't care about their people. They're only there to protect themselves. Pharisees don't want this stranger from the countryside speaking with authority as one of the rabbis in the temple coming along and then all of a sudden calling himself the good shepherd. 
How dare he claim that he'll lay down his life for his sheep? But really, this is foreshadowing something greater, isn't it? Won't Jesus willingly lay down his life for us? Isn't Jesus so devoted to us and loves us so much that he will use his power, not for selfish reasons, but for the salvation of the world? And not just the original flock, but for all, for all of us. I think it's important for us at Faith Lutheran to remember why we are a welcoming church. And by welcome, I don't mean, please come join so that we can convert you to be exactly like us. Christ's love is bigger than any one expression of faith. All of us, all of us gathered here today, we have different backgrounds and different beliefs and different histories of how we see the church. And we all know that this is the place where we can gather and know that we are in a safe place place. This is the place that we can gather and know that we are welcome to be present in the house of the Lord, that there is a seat or a pew for you, that you're encouraged to share your voice and to to actively serve in this community, to know that our flock is stronger and richer because the depth and the beauty and the variety of the sheep who safely graze in this sanctuary. And yes, that was a sheep may safely graze joke. Okay. So I had to get the Bach in there. We know that when we are gathered here in this place, that Jesus has gathered us and this is a place of safety. Yet we, we can't forget about how sometimes speaking to a bigger flock that can be open and inclusive can be threatening. It can be threatening to the world because as Jesus is saying that same message to those who are gathered there, the Pharisees start name calling. They want to find excuses to ignore him. Many of them were saying he has a demon and he's out of his mind. Why would we listen to him? But some of the others who are gathered there are starting to really hear something that might be powerful, that might change their lives. And so some of them said, these were not words of of one who has a demon. How can a demon open the eyes of the blind? This metaphor about sheep all comes back to the man being born blind, now given sight. So today, are our eyes open? Today, as we gather in this place, we see the ministry that's going on around us. Later this morning, a group of about 20 faith members are going to gather and discuss a book about uh, transforming the Bible and the lives of transgender Christians. It's a group that's going to gather and intentionally learn from Austin Hartke, who at one point asks the question, what if the lost sheep didn't wander away from safety and goodness of the shepherd? What if it was just trying to escape the cruelty of the flock? Will our neighbors know that this flock, faith, is not a a place of cruelty? Will our eyes be open to how we can show expressions of love to our neighbors? especially neighbors who might not be historically welcome in church. Yesterday, Red and Diane took 117 candles down to walking with a purpose. They shared this with our unsheltered neighbors. Will our flock be open to the value and worth of all of our neighbors, even if they belong to a different economic class or living situation than us? Thank you for responding to the call and responding to the call for action. And beautiful Eden, oh my goodness, it wasn't that long ago that I gathered with the two of you, and this was our dress rehearsal. I know, I love, I love this. But you guys did something really powerful. You had a Christian ceremony and a Muslim ceremony. And so today, Eden, this is beautiful. I know, I know, right? She's adorable, folks. Eden is a baptized child of God, beloved in the eyes of her creator. And we promised faith to walk alongside Eden as she learns the value of love both from Laura and from Anil and both of your faith traditions as they gather around her. And then in a few minutes, we're going to gather together and we're going to hear in adult form about our work with ELOG, the Lutheran Church in Guatemala. Here's the bishop down in Guatemala just a few years ago. We're going to see how our work as the St. Paul Area Synod impacts the lives of our neighbors down in Central America, down in Guatemala. But even more, we're going to learn how it's going to impact us how our service and connection with partners from around the world actually helps grow and enhance our own faith. This is amazing grace at work. We were blind, but now we see. 
Christ has laid down his life so that we could have life and we could have it abundantly. We don't move forward with fear and shame. There is no exclusion in this church because everyone belongs and everyone is welcome. The Good Shepherd invites us all to join. Hear that voice and know that you, each and every one of you, is welcome in this place. Amen.